when I was two years old, though, is when we moved to Japan. And so the reason why I don't remember even those first formative years, I guess, is because I actually thought I was from Japan. We were there. <laughs> from, yeah, so we were there. I moved there when I was two, and I moved back to the States when I was seven. And I remember when we came back, I asked my parents, when are we going home? Because I thought Okinawa, Japan was home. Wow. Well, I think that there's a balance, right? Because I think that our duty as parents is more so to preserve their innocence, right? I think that is more so of like what we should do to protect them as they're younger. But I don't think that means that we need to protect them from all things that are real. And, and so I pull up and it's just, there's first responders everywhere. There's news reporters there. There's news trucks out there. There's people from the community. There's people from church. I mean, it was just, um, it was chaos. And, um, and I don't remember who told me or when they told me uh, that he died and, and died instantly. Um, but that, that was the night that my, that my life changed. And so if we could just give some grace and think about this, and I, I say this a lot in my workshops, if you could just think to yourself for a moment before responding to somebody else's grief, if you could just say to yourself, I don't know everything and I can't imagine what they're going through, it immediately breaks this, this barrier down so that you can really show up and just be empathetic without being judgmental. Because I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even fathom that level of pain. Mm. And, but I do think that the way that we can show up for, for one another with compassion and with empathy is instead of thinking about just their situation, just reflect on a time where you felt pain. Mm. Exactly. And if you can start there, then that's going to help you show up for this person and not think about all of the details and just relate to them, you know, from one human spirit to another. I know what pain feels like, and I'm sorry that you're going through this. And I may not have all the right words, but I'm, I'm, I am willing to be here with you and walk through it. Psychology. So anything positive psychology, I am digging deep into that research. Mm -hmm. And so what I found was when we exercise compassion and empathy on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, in how we're listening in a meeting and how we're interacting in the hallways, if we do that on the day-to-day, -day, then it's mastery preparation for the time of crisis. And so I just, I, I, again, I pivoted away from looking at just grief and I said, well, hold on, how are we talking about, um, or, or how are we managing and interacting and engaging with one another on uh, in our everyday lives. It doesn't mean that that's okay, but it does mean when you practice acceptance, that means that you acknowledge your starting point. Okay, I know this has happened. I may not feel good about it, but this is where I am today and this is how I want to move forward. And then the last piece of that is I had to learn how to love myself. You know, I had to put my oxygen mask on first before I could even take care of my son, who was mm. my motivation. And so, what I just mentioned to you, H E A L, heal, is the method that I realized this is exact, these are the steps that I took. This is exactly my pathway back to a whole heart. So, at first, it's about understanding that your business is not driven by numbers. Your business is driven and created and thriving because of its people. I don't care how much AI you have interwoven into your business. There are people <laughs> behind that as well. And so first is acknowledging that when you take care of your people, your people will take care of your business. And that's actually my favorite Richard Branson quote. I have so much respect for single parents in a way that I never understood before. It is tiring and it is so hard to balance between, um, you know, the demands of having everything ready and good and, and like, working like a well-oiled machine at home and also trying to give your best when it comes to work.